Hey ladies and gents, welcome back to Crazy Boulder's channel. In today's video, I'm going to be going over one of the really cool projects that I've been working on. I'm back to working on the Xbox One Super Slim. Now, um, at this point, I have decided that I'm going to water cool the system. As previously, it was air cooled and it tended to be fairly loud. Although I think that this system will probably be pretty much just as loud, but maybe a little bit quieter. It just depends. Um, on how much I ramp up the fans, but basically um, you have the uh, layout of the system right here and some of these fans are falling through. I've got a couple of um, different things to do here, but as you can see essentially what's going to happen is I'm going to have some kind of a pump over here right now. I'm looking at potentially getting a micro pump for this since none of the kind of computer pumps that I've been looking at are kind of big enough for this kind of task. Um, the hard disk is going to be right here, but eventually that's going to get replaced with an SSD. Now, that's going to be going to a SATA adapter. Um, again, that'll be at some point down the road. Now, also, I will be keeping the stock uh, DVD drive in here. The um, RF board, which connects to the controllers, etc., is going to be in this area. And then I've got basically three um, aluminum uh, kind of water blocks or water uh, cold plates, I guess you could call them. And these are um, glued to um, copper heat sinks. And then on the side here, I'm going to have basically three 40 millimeter fans that are going to be blowing across those copper heat sinks to hopefully keep the system nice and cool. Down here, I have a water block. I'll be going over the details of what the water block is um, once I kind of do the build series on this. Now, currently, this is just kind of the basic layout of how things are going to go. Um, the other parts that I'm currently working on um, after having done this is um, there's a fan header here, but it can't quite provide enough voltage, um, or I should say current, uh, for running the fans. So I've ordered a piece that will allow me to actually basically um, use a voltage up conversion to be able to run the fans. Also, it gives me a little bit more current to play with. Um, so I should be able to run the fans at that point, um, basically at full tilt if I so choose. Um, but I can also control um, the voltage readout um, that it's going to have basically. Because I'll have a little LCD screen that I've got on order as well. That's going to tell me what voltage they're running at, what sort of amps um, they're pulling. So that'll allow me to kind of give a more real-time readout. And then I'll be able to basically pop the case off, make an adjustment, and then um, basically go back and do whatever I end up doing. Um, at some point, I may also end up um, moving the actual pot, which is the switch that allows me to control that voltage slash amperage um, off to more or less the front of the case so I can trigger that remotely. Um, but I'm not sure how well it's gonna work out because I also need to move the antenna um, somewhere out front um, from the RF board. That way it's actually able to pick up controllers properly. So that's gonna be one, you know, one area that needs a lot of work. Um, also, the uh, Wi-Fi board is going to have to have a little cutout, which I'm probably going to do some plexiglass um, there to allow it to basically sit um, in an area where it's got more or less of an open view um, to the outside, or at least not bouncing off of the metal um, inside of this case. And then, of course, um, the other part is going to be actually routing um, all the water between the uh, cold plates so that I'm able to actually have this thing work. Now. Um, in some ways, I'm kind of regretting just not getting a single larger piece that's got two outlets um, because that would have simplified the piping in a lot of ways. Um, but at the same time, having these be an individual piece allows me much greater precision in terms of maneuvering them around and also in terms of keeping the um, copper heat sinks more or less intact. I did have to cut some of them. Um, in order to make this fit, but as it stands, you know, again, I'll go over more of the details of the build um, and the parts that are going into it um, as kind of things progress. Now, uh, the next plan, obviously, after I get all these fittings kind of sorted, is to actually run the pump. Um, I have run like a basic computer PC cooling pump um, on this system previously, and you know, it seemed to have worked okay. I was getting decent water flow, but the other part that I'm waiting on is an actual flow meter, which will allow me to monitor, you know, how well the, the system is running. Again, in real time, I wanted to originally just use a plastic flow meter, um, like most PC builds do, but I figured having something that actually gives me a readout 
um, would kind of be able to tell me, you know, the state that my pump is in and also see if for some reason, if I have a kink in the loop that, you know, it's now not flowing as quickly. Um, so that'll be a lot more evident when you actually see numbers versus something that just spins where you can't necessarily tell um, if it's slowed down a whole lot. Um, so that's one thing that's going to happen. That same um, LCD or OLED screen is also going to give me the water temperature. So I'll be able to kind of keep an eye on, you know, how the system is doing. But I think with this cooling, it's going to be more than adequate for this type of stuff that I'm trying to do. Now, um, the... Part of the plan originally was to actually try and move the power supply also inside the Xbox itself. But now that I'm looking at just how all the water lines are going to be routed and just looking at, you know, where the control board or the RF board is, um, I don't think it's going to be possible. And the other part is that having the power supply inside also just means introducing more heat into the system, which is what we don't want. Um, so the power supply is going to stay outside and that's fine. Um, you know, the console as it is right now is already probably heavier than the Xbox One was when it came out, uh, but it's going to be a lot, a lot smaller. And I'll show you guys in a second, um, you know, basically once everything is inside of the case, how it's going to look, because it's going to be very small and still also maintain water cooling. All right, so as you can see, this is basically what the final product is going to look like. Um, there's going to be a little kind of exhaust port um, up on top to allow the hotter air to escape, meaning it's going to have the intakes from the fans up in here, and it's going to come out and go this way. Um, the way that I'm going to do that is um, probably just going to use, again, some kind of you know acrylic or plexiglass to create um, basically a kind of duct that will allow the air to move this way and escape. That way, hopefully not keeping the air in the case and keeping it moving along the fins as much as possible. Now, in theory, um, having the air run out is not a big deal because there's a lot of openings in this case, um, especially in the back where it's a whole mess from where I did some pretty terrible cutting. But in general, um, this is what it's going to look like. Now, I haven't quite decided where I'm going to put um, some things currently. Um, because I do need to still sort out a place for the uh, water meter. Um, probably I'm going to make some kind of a cutout for it here. Uh, maybe it's going to be on the side, but ideally I would want it in a place such that it's relatively visible since um, the console itself is actually going to be standing uh, pretty much like this on a special stand. Um, so anything that I can do in terms of putting stuff up top um, or um, on the side is going to be a huge win in terms of making this work. Uh, the other part is that because the uh, fans, and you can actually see the copper um, for the heat sinks in here. Now, because the fans kind of protrude out a little bit, I'm going to need to get some slightly taller feet um, for the case. Now, it's not really a big deal, um, but it's not gonna be aesthetically the, the best looking thing ever. Uh, but that was basically the only way to make the fans fit was to have a slight cutout in here to allow the Xbox to basically have a little bit of breathing room, um, essentially, um, and to have uh, the fans not uh, come up against the top of the case. But at any rate, that's the uh, that's the progress. I'm also gonna need to redo um, the eject and sync buttons as well. I may relocate them and basically just put some LEDs in place of where these used to be, um, probably to let me know that I have actually pushed the uh, sync and eject buttons. So hopefully it'll clean up this area just a little tad bit. And again, um, out here in the front, I'm also probably going to put a little bit of plexiglass slash Lexan um, so that I can put in the um, actual antenna for the RF board. So anyway, guys, this is the updates on the Xbox One Super Slim, which is going to be getting water cooled. Um, again, uh, it may take me a little bit of time since I'm still waiting on water parts to come in uh, due to COVID. You know, things are moving pretty slowly. Um, again, it may also be quite a bit of time before I'm actually able to secure the type of water pump that I want to use in this particular case, as all the ones that I've been using so far uh, simply don't work. The other part that happened is um, the motherboard that I've been using for this guy since uh, roughly 2016 has decided to just die, and um, you know, I would normally just go through and troubleshoot it and possibly it's a MOSFET issue um, that just needs to be replaced. But it's, to me, you know, too much work that I don't want to put into the time right now. 
Um, so the motherboard from this guy is going to be going on eBay as just like a parts, um, you know, part out basically for anybody that needs capacitors or other MOSFETs, whatever the stuff that is working. Um, you know, some console repair shop will probably pick that thing up. Um, in the meantime, I've gotten a different motherboard um, for this specifically for this project so that I can get ahead and um, start moving things because now that I have the general layout of everything, um, it's just a matter of tidying up some wiring, basically getting the water stuff hooked up, and then um, getting the routing for the antenna uh, squared away, um, and just some ancillary stuff in terms of displays, etc to be able to get this project um, to hit the ground running, basically. Now, the, the next plan for this is to ultimately see if um, I can see if there's any performance difference. Um, I'm going to try and, you know, run through some videos where um, folks have recorded frame rates before. Um, and so I'll try and compare and see if the water cooling does actually make a difference. I don't really think that it will. Um, I think it's just more going to be that the console is going to run a little bit cooler. Um, because I don't believe that this processor is able to overclock itself um, to any degree. Uh, I mean, I could be wrong, but that's that's what I remember reading online about this thing um, a little bit back. Um, so that's you know that's one potential negative that this is just you know kind of like a um, novelty project. But I wanted to do it because it's just a cool system to have, and it's certainly a lot easier to lug around even than um, my Xbox One X. Um, that I have sitting around. I don't have a Series X just yet, but it's going to be really neat to see um, across the generations how the uh, water-cooled Xbox One original compares to the Xbox One X and compares to the Series X in a certain video later on down the road. So stick around and check out more videos in the build series on this thing as I'll be going a little bit more into detail on what I actually did as there are a lot of different steps to kind of make this happen and uh, ultimately I'll come to the completion of this project and you'll all see this thing working. So stick around and subscribe in the meantime and like the video if you want to see more and I'll see you guys soon.